Hi, this is Vianney Warner. This is volume 4 of a 10 video series of tutorials about Camilo LMS. So in the previous session, what we saw was how to create a course and how to, uh, what were these tools that we have here in the course homepage, how to change the course settings and how to take a course backup. Um, now in this course, we're going to see a little bit about how to create content. So what we're going to do is create a document, create an exercise, create a forum and then create a learning path that will combine all of these. So first let's create a document. So we're going to go to the document tool and we're going to cre click on this first icon. The, every icon that looks like a small white, uh, yellow star is actually an option to create new content. Okay, so here we can create a new document, uh, text document basically. Here we can cre create a new diagram. Here we can uh, record uh, our voice. We can uh, create a folder. Everything is done in Camilo to simplify the life of the teacher. So basically all these tools can be used inside the browser. You don't need any additional tool to do that. So let's click on this uh, document creation item. So when I get to this page, what I will see is a big white zone here, um, a small title area. So I can just click on, uh, I can just, uh, for example, type introduction here, and this will be my introduction document. And you can see that you have a content templates column here uh, that you can use to inspire yourself and, and pick a, um, any type of content that you think will fit your presentation type. So if you click on one of them, you'll get this content default presentation inside the text edition area. So you can just uh, change here, for example, say um, chapter one. Um, yes, maybe chapter one. This is not not an introduction. Then it's uh, most likely something like table of contents. Um, chapter one. Uh, what we're in the Camilo course, so chapter one will be uh, creating an account. Chapter two will be creating a course chapter 3 will be configuring the course and chapter 4 will be something like uh, creating content okay so this is my document I can change this picture of course I'm gonna leave this one because it's a uh, it's nice, um, but uh, it's obviously unrelated to my course. So I, I should change it to something more related, for example, a screenshot or someone studying or something like that. I can do that with this icon here that says insert edit image. If I go there, I can see the, the, the current document. I can browse the server and pick another image. OK, I just have to choose one of these images um that will fit my presentation or i can upload one i can here i have an option that says upload uh, and i can upload one select my icon and then say insert and this will automatically replace the icon that is the, the image that is there at the moment okay uh, once i'm ready i can pick the destination folder U usually i for simple documents i will leave them in the home folder and then I can click on create the rich media page. Once I did that, I can see that these were already there, these folders, there are default folders that appear there because when I created the course, I selected to um, that the system should create me, uh, should create a, a few default content for me. So basically these uh, appear to me, but they don't appear to the students because the I here is closed okay the students will only see things that have uh, an opened eye okay the teachers can see either opened or closed 
um, but they will usually use them to build more content and not give direct access to their students to these. So here if I click on the table of contents title, I can see my document finished or rendered. Um, I can go back to the documents list and I can also do a series of things with it. I can export it as PDF. I can um, add a template based on this one. So I can, like like the other templates that you saw in the left column, I, can, I could reuse this one as a template. So for example, I could create a document with the logo of my institution on top and then decide that this is the template for all other documents to come. Um, okay, so this is the creation of documents. What I'm going to do now is go to exercises or tests and I'm going to create a small test. So there's, there's one already there that I can reuse. It's, it's been created when I selected the fill with demo content option when I created the course originally. Uh, but I'm going to create a new one. Okay, so just to show you how easy it is, I can click on the first icon that says create a test. Uh, I can select a, a title for the test. So this is the test uh, about Camilo chapter one, for example. Okay, I could give me more stuff here. I have a lot of options uh, that, that allow me to configure what the type of behavior will be of that test. But I want to do something quick. So I'm going to click on proceed to questions. And then I can see all these options. And these are each of them is a, a question type so i can pick one of these when i pass over the the icon so this doesn't work obviously in on touch screens because i can't move over without touching it uh, but basically you can see the type of questions uh, it's also designed so you get a slight idea of how what type of, of question it is just by looking at it so for the multiple choice which is the easier one the easiest one i'm going to just click the icon and this is going to send me to a form that will allow me to uh, write a question. So, for example, uh, for Camilo, I can say uh, what type of licensing uh, does the Camilo LMS system use? OK, and so I can say, for example, proprietary, proprietary software. Um, I can say free software, I can say open source, this is slightly different. Um, and I can say, uh, I, I don't know. Okay, so I could say, for example, that if, if he gets it wrong, the students will get minus one. If he get, gets it correctly, he'll get two points. And open source is kind of correct, but it's not the exact license, so you'll get one. And then if he doesn't know, he'll get zero because he doesn't know. So if I want to make sure that the system understands which one is correct, I'm going to have to uh, select it in that col in this column that says true. I'm going to have to select the right answer. Uh, you can see a comment section here that will allow you to give instant feedback to the student once he finishes the test. Uh, for example, uh, here I can just say, well done. And the idea of these comments is depending on the configuration of the test, it might not appear. But if it appears, uh, if I decided that it should appear, then it really needs to help the student understand his mistake and, and fix it, right? So here, uh, open source, for example, open source is not exactly the same as free software, for example. Oh. Although here we're practi practically giving him the answer already. Um, please check your notes on licensing. Something like that. So the student knows where to where to look. Uh, he knows what to do. Check your notes, and so he can improve his understanding and and, and improve uh, his his grades next time he takes the test. Um, and here. This is completely uh, wrong. Okay, uh, please review the license page, licensing page in your notes. Okay, uh, and then I don't know. Well, he doesn't know. Okay, and so I, I'm going to add this question to the test, and it's going to appear here. Okay. 
So what I'm going to do, I don't want to lose much of your time, so I'm, uh, I could create another question. What I'm going to do is just copy this question with the CD here. Okay, and I copy the question, and then the question will, will be named something very similar. If you look at the, the title here, you can say that, see that it finishes with copy. Okay, this is the original here. So now I'm going to look at what my student will see if he, if he was to take the test. Okay, so I'm going to use that magnifier icon here. It says preview. I can see the, test of the, the, the title of the test. I can see a button that says start test. Usually here in between comes the explanations that I might have um, entered to, to describe my test and how what, what the questions types are and that kind of stuff. I can click on start test and once I click start test, basically my uh, attempt is registered and if I have a limit of time, I will have a, 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 um, a regressive um, time count showing and I will know when my time is up as a student. So I can click on free software here for example and here I'm going to click on proprietary software and so when I get the the answer what what I get is basically for the for the the answer that I picked I get a comment and if it's correct then it says well done because I configured that and if it's incorrect then I, I, I'll have something that says this question was wrong uh, the score is zero and basically if, if you remember when well we set up minus one for proprietary software but uh, usually in, in Camilo we're we're rounding up to zero uh, from one question to another so if you got m less than zero you get zero there's an option to change that but the default behavior is like that so if I got it wrong it tells me no this is completely wrong please review the licensing page in your notes so I know what to review right and I can also say that this is a link uh, to the notes that correspond to the licensing information okay so this is the exercise tool so we create an exercise now and students could go there and take the exercise they can just enter the test part and click on this this link and they will enter it if I don't want the other one to be seen by my students I can just click the eye here and it will disappear from my students view and now I'm gonna get back to the home page and I go I'm gonna go to the forum tool which will allow me to create a small forum in this case I already have a, f a forum created automatically I'm, I'm gonna create another one so usually in an online course the first thing that you do is ask people to in this introduce themselves this allows other users to to know who is participating to this course and so uh, make a, a, a better um, interaction with other students as well okay so i can say that the, the type of uh, of uh, forum the, the description of the forum i can set it here i can say that um, i have a few options uh, for, for for each of these forums and then i can create the forum and i will see it here appear okay and if i click it i can create a new um, topic of discussion and say for example my name is Yannick and hi I'm a software engineer uh, from Belgium uh, it's great to participate to this course etc uh, etc et okay so I can create a thread and then inside the, the thread itself i'm going to see this message if i have an image it's gonna my a picture it's gonna appear here uh, i have my message and other people can answer my message just clicking the reply button okay so this is how the forum works so now we created the forum we created the exercise we created the document what we're going to do is create a a learning path which is a combination of several of these resources and here we click on create and learning path we give it a title so Camilo introduction and we're gonna add the content to this uh, learning path so what we're gonna see here is that we have uh, access to documents exercises links 
tasks, forums, and categories. If you want to, if we want to create content, we're going to, we're going to just be able to pick existing content or create our own with the link here that says new test or reach my page activity. So in this case, I'm going to say that I want this element to be part of my learning path. So I'm going to just drag and drop it here. And then I'm going to say that I want, maybe I wanted a category first. So chapter one, there we go. I create this category and then I can move the, the, the table of content inside the category. This is a little tricky. It's always kind of a, something to, to get there. There's a small yellow area and you can move it to, to see it better. But um, basically sometimes it's a little bit hard to see. And then let's say that there is a forum um, that says introduce yourself. So this is kind of a link to the forum from the learning path. And then we can say that at the end of this chapter one, we'll get a test and this test will decide on whether we can enter chapter two or not. Okay. So what, how, we, how do we do that? We can create another section, chapter two, and we'll automatically appear, uh, automatically appear down here. We can, um, we can actually use the same document several times. This is a, a bit weird, but uh, maybe sometime you will need it. And then once we did that, we can just say, you know, for example, I want to uh, configure prerequisites. So I have to click on the last one and say, okay, to get to this step, I want the user to have achieved this test here uh, with more than 50%, for example. Okay, so here I, I, I go there, I click on the green box, the green uh, box, no, green, green circle, and I get this page, and this page shows me the last element before this um, step, and I can say, okay, I want to depend on this item, and the student has to have two uh, out of four to be able to pass to, the, uh, to this step here. Okay, so this will drive the student uh, following a specific um, path, basically. So if I want to preview that as a student, I'm going to click on the magnifier uh, icon again. And this is going to show me the course itself. So here I have the chapters, the different elements of the chapter. If I want to go to the, the other table of contents here, it's going to tell me that the learning object cannot be displayed because the course prerequisites have not completed. Okay, so I, can, I have to go there, back in there. I have to go to the test, take the test, get it right. Otherwise, I can't move to the next step. And then now I can move to the last one. Okay, so and, uh, all along you can see the progress that uh, increases. This blue bar only appears to me as a teacher. It doesn't appear to the students. And I can go, come back to the course home, uh, basically. And that's it for this volume. And you can connect to the next volume to check uh, stuff about the admin page and how to manage your campus. Thank you.